The Sony A90J is not worth $3,000. If you'd like to know why, smack a like on this video, and I'll get to the point right now. No fancy B-roll, no wasting your time talking about HDMI ports or basic specs. You could have read yourself online. We're just going to dive right into it. So it's not worth $3,000 because Sony basically is like a bad marriage. And for those that don't know what that expression is all about, essentially they're not trying for you. Sony's not putting on their best duds or wearing makeup or even trying to do their hair anymore. They're just showing up in t-shirts and pajamas and their head all tore up and fucking they don't care anymore, right? They're just gonna show up however they show up to the party. That's essentially what's happening in 2021 because Sony has gotten a little too cocky. They realize they're Sony. They realize that used to mean something and there are brand loyalists out there. At this point in time to all the brand loyalists for Sony, Please understand, you are in a bad marriage. Sony knows they got you. And since they have you, they're not going to try for you anymore. That's the worst message you can send a corporation. You need to let them know they don't got you because at least they'll try for you. It's the concept between boyfriend and girlfriend to husband and wife. If you let your girlfriend know that, you know, you're not going to try for her, she's going to leave you. Well, once you're married to something like brand loyalists are to a brand, you're kind of where we are today. Oh boy, there's so much to talk about, so little time. So let's talk about the good things first so we don't upset too many people. Because the reality is it does do a lot right. The color, for example, is absolutely mind-blowing. This year they have a new IMAX Enhanced preset, and you can use it in HDR or in SDR. That, for me, really saved this TV from getting a failing grade because that was really what blew my mind the most. Colors were amazing. I mean, like, one of the best, if not best, I've seen ever on SDR. Like, Adobe RGB has been refined this year to really being more pure with color. You get a certain level of purity that's just almost bioluminescent, and it's just really gorgeous. Just gorgeous. It really is. Breathtaking color. I'm very excited about that color, very passionate about that color, and then it really, honest to God, saved my purchase for me. I'm not going to lie, because I was really wanting to get rid of this damn thing. But I tell you right now, that's what saved it for me. Now, color aside, brightness is also really good this year because they have a pretty intelligent way that they place highlights. So highlights like light bulbs or street signs or things like that, like things that have a really bright nature to them, it, it really tracks correctly and you get excellent contrast. Not perfect, it does miscalculate sometimes and actually ends up clipping detail and actually losing out detail compared to my older OLED, which is my Sony A8G. I saw that and that really kind of disappointed me a bit. So that is something you're gonna have to think about. Though they're talking about this cognitive processor, it's not so much better than an X1 Extreme chip that you'd be just blowing everything in years prior from Sony behind. We need to say that because nobody is going to compare to these older processors. They just won't do it, there's no money in it. But fortunately for everybody watching, I'm not getting paid or making any money, so I can tell you these things. And the reality is, when I compared it to my Sony AHG, the AHG tied with it. They were so close that it was disappointing. And I think that's one of the things that you have to know. If you're somebody that owns an older OLED like a Sony AHG, well, you don't really need to upgrade because this is not some dramatic leap forward. In fact, in my testing of the Peak Nits, I actually found that this isn't too much of a generational leap in OLED at all. The LG C10, for example, is brighter in some areas, in some moments, and then this TV can be brighter because it, it chooses where it puts the highlights, right? But now what's funny is when you start lowering the brightness down because the TV is over brightening and it's sloppy and it's blowing out and clipping clouds and things like that, by the time you lower it down to a realistic level of brightness, you're around the 800 and 900 nit ballpark range, right? The LG C8 from 2018 was 900 nits and that's not anything brand new. So I feel like this is a bit of a gimmick to try to say that this is some evolutionary step forward. That's a bit of a cop out and I'm just going to leave it at that because I'll be ranting for hours if I don't. What I will say though is there are things that I did like, like the sound that helped kind of taper that back a little bit. It felt like I had a little miniature sound bar in the room and that's always nice, right? You don't have to run out and buy anything extra. So if this is all you need, like for me, this is just a bedroom TV, right? So to have a sound that is so pure and clean that I don't need a sound bar saves me some money. Will I eventually buy a sound bar? Yeah, probably, but I don't have to rush out and do it. And that's nice to know. But again, it's not like game changing sound or anything like that. So don't think that it is. It's just really nice sound. All right, so now let's talk about the bad. Sony catfished the hell out of everybody that expected something premium this year. And I'll just say that. This TV is reclaimed plastic. 40% of your TV is reclaimed plastic. They put it in a cardboard box. They didn't tape it or glue it or staple it. 
It's just a cardboard box and you know, it's got straps over it, but the top of the box isn't glued or stapled at all. So if one of those straps break or something happens, your TV could maybe pop out. That's not nice for those who maybe are buying on Amazon or online. So be mindful, the security on this thing, not the best. Probably actually one of the worst I've seen. Okay, so then we get past that point, right? Maybe this is just a petty gripe. At this point, I'll tell you, wrong. You're very wrong. You might want to reconsider that. Because, you know, yes, we're talking about packaging. And to those who say, I just throw it in the garbage. Good for you. But it's important to note two things. One, if you move, where are you going to put the box? You don't want to throw a t-shirt over your $3,000 TV. That's just not smart. And also, you don't drink wine in a solo cup, do you? No. You don't do fine dining on paper plates. No. And you don't put a $3,000 TV in a cardboard box with no graphics or no attention to detail or no premium anything. It, it just, it's tacky, right? And that's where we are right now. Sony's getting tacky because they know they have their consumer base, they know they have their fans, and they'll never mess that up because they've built up enough of a following. That's bad. That's where we start getting downgrades. And honestly, one of the biggest downgrades I've seen is design-wise. With it being 40% reclaimed plastic, you'd think they would try to make up for that fact that maybe you have a piss bottle in the, the framework of your TV's design somewhere. You don't know what the reclaimed plastic is, right? You don't know. It could be anything. It could be it could be anything. Let's leave it at that, okay? It could get very graphic if we don't, okay? I, I'm disgusted at the fact that it's 40% reclaimed plastic. That's cheap. That's disgusting. Those environmental friendly people right now chiming off in the comment section, you might want to stop because Sony, with all their road to zero talk, did not include biodegradable plastics. That would have made so much more sense. Biodegradable packaging. Nothing's biodegradable. Nothing's environmentally safe. And there is a lot of plastic, more than enough to fill a landfill. They don't care about the environment. This road to zero thing is just a scam at this point in time. They're just saying that so they can offset the cost by giving you a 40% reclaimed TV and then make the profit back by charging three grand for it. So wake up, man, because that's where we're at. And it's frustrating that I have to say that, but some people really don't get that, okay? But then you'd think they'd make up for it being 40% reclaimed by doing something premium, but they don't do that because when you look at the TV, there's no chrome trim, there's no tight, sexy metal design to it, there's no metal build quality at all. It's actually 100% made of plastic, and the only metal element at all is the stand, and it's metal and rubber. It is the cheapest TV I have ever ever, ever, ever felt in my hands for $3,000. I have never seen anything this disgustingly cheap. They did not even try. I've honestly seen TVs like the Hisense H9G, which is a $599 TV, literally look more premium this, than this TV. That's how disgusting they did. They, they did so poorly this year with the design and the effort. And that's due, again, to all the brand loyalists telling them they don't have to try anymore. So that's where we are. Oh, but don't think it just stops there if you think I'm being petty. They also advertise that you'd have VRR. You don't have that either. That's coming winter 2021. They advertise that they'd have this nice redesign and the sexy XR logo on the back, this new design. That's a total lie. There's nothing like that on the back of the TV. It's just cheap plastic, cheap ribbed plastic. Like what? I mean, if I could count the drop promises and the disappointments that this TV delivers for three grand... It would really start to feel like Sony has lost their minds, and we're about to help them find it. Because honestly speaking, you charge $3,000, this thing had better be singing and humming. Because let's make no mistake, for $3,000, you can buy a decent used car. You watch this thing, okay, people? You don't drive it. And they're acting like you're buying some premium experience that's just so wonderful, it's worth this. And it's not. Because the LG C10 right now at Best Buy, as of April 2021, is $1349.99. You put taxes on that, that's $1444. That's what I paid for my C10. And I tell you right now, that's less than half the price. The C10 has better motion. I've shown that off. Sony has low frame rates, juttery, choppy, smeary. It looks bad, man. It just doesn't look like a smooth TV. Now, that improves greatly when you go up to 60 FPS or higher. But again, those are usually more responsive frame rates, and you'd kind of be like an idiot of a company to mess that up at all. Like, how could you jack up 60 FPS? It's so easy. But lower frame rates, which movies sit at, this TV sucks at. They still have no 24p option like they did on the A8G that I love so much, right? The 24p synchronization option is just gone, and things look so juddery and choppy. The lower your frame rate is on this TV, the worse it's gonna look. Now, that kind of sounds like common sense, but that's not the way it should actually work. There should be compensations built in to help you with that, right? For example, 30 FPS gaming on this TV looks like ass. For example, 
24p movies look like ass. Those are very popular frame rates for less powerful devices and different kinds of content pieces. And this is going to play a role in the streaming. Now, while we're talking about streaming, it's important to note that that Bravia core that they're talking about isn't a part of your processor. That's a freaking streaming free feature and a new thing that Sony's trying to sell on you. Don't buy into that. The Bravia core is a total gimmick because unless you want to buy a subscription service for their Bravia core, you're not going to be getting that as a benefit. So when you're watching Netflix and Hulu and all those other stuffs, you're just basically going to be sitting there like, wow, that's tight work. It just looks exactly the same as it did last year on literally every OLED you made. So I found that part to be really distasteful. I mean, for everything good, this TV takes something away and the message is simple. This is a three-star product. It's good. And in some areas, it could be mind-blowing and fantastic and downright exciting, but then you immediately find a downgrade or something that upsets you, like the terms of service that forces you to adhere to all the legal addendum. And, you know, maybe some people are okay with that. I mean, after all, we do have people that are okay with double masking, and we literally have people okay that a two-year-old just got kicked off of a flight for eating and not wearing a mask while they were eating. I mean, this is where we are in 2021. Believe me, the compliance thing in, in 2021 is a problem. But at the end of the day, it shouldn't be so much of a problem that we're experiencing bad goods like this and people are going to defend it. And my hope with this review, by being brutally honest and transparent, is that maybe some people will wake up and stop complying and just saying yes to everything and tell Sony, I'm sick of the bad marriage, get your act together and start trying for your consumers. That's not too much to ask for three grand. And that's where I'll leave this review. But if you have questions, I'll help you find the right product for you and your family. So let me know in the comment section what you need help with and I'll do the best I can to help you out. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.